Day three of my Magnetowan adventure. No sign of Ted. Um, I'm concerned um, that uh, he might not be able to find me or something. This lake has a lot of islands and bays and it's tough to navigate. Just here at uh, Wawash Cache. Um, gonna be meeting up with my brother Jim who's camped out on the lake. And uh, we got a beautiful day. I heard the bugs have been horrible, but they're not too bad right now, but I'm sure we'll get into some bad ones. He was just paddling in the upper section of the Magnetowan River and uh, gonna head out and paddle this lower section to Georgian Bay. And uh, I haven't done much soloing, so <laughs> jumping right into it. No sign of him yet. Um, I've been just sitting around taking a few casts and that kind of stuff. Woo! Oh, it's a bass. Bass season's not open, so I gotta release this quickly. All right, fishing. Feels good to get on the board. Nice bite. Lots of pep in that guy. Man, that was fun. Oh man, that's chilly. It's getting quite late, so I'm starting to get a little worried. I'm sure he'll be here, I'm just, maybe he ran into some stuff. But anyways, I guess I'm just gonna get ready for when he does get here so we don't get too far behind on the day. Are you being lazy today? Buck doesn't seem to want to get out of the tent. I think the bugs are what's prompting him to not leave it this time. Whatever do we do with the buckaroo? Buckaroo's the cutest dog who knew he is up late, way past his curfew. It's time to go to bed, just like Scooby Doo we do. Buckaroo, buckaroo, oh buckaroo, buckaroo, buckaroo we the shrew. Who is the vroo? He's the buckaroo. So in the Voyager days, when someone would sleep in, the other voyagers would drop the tent on him. Well, that's what I'm doing to Buck, but it still doesn't really seem to be working. Time to get up, Buck. Well, thank you for joining us, Buck. Good boy. Pushing on to one. But no Ted yet, I'm thinking that he's gonna pop his head around the corner any minute. That's where I'm expecting Ted to come from. So it looks like Ted has found me. Hey Ted! Pretty much just arriving at Jim's campsite here. He's yelling out to me. How's it going? Good. Buckaroo sees you. Is that Ted? Oh, it's Buck. Hi, Buck. I forgot, Jim. I wasn't sure. I figured Jim didn't bring the buckaroo. Hi, Buck. Good boy. Good boy. Hey, Buck. Hi. Oh, oh, man, I knew it. Good. Yeah. Good boy. There's a better place to pull around over here. We should just, you know, camp on this lake, fish, just relax. 
<laughs> I know, right? Fuck, how nice of you to greet me. He's here! Yeah! Would you recommend your first solo trip on an advanced level river in high water in a, in a boat that's meant for tandem? Yeah, that's a little concerning, so I wouldn't uh, recommend that, no. <laughs> the water level is crazy high. Uh, I checked, uh, there's like a flow chart in Brit, and it's come up about 15 cubic meters per second since June 10th with all the rain that we've been getting. Fill this up for me. so hard. Sorry. God damn it. Ted's getting his spray deck on. First up, some flat water. Damn. Nice class two. Raging rapid in massive canyon, followed by raging rapid. And then another intense class three. Here we go. Jim and Ted's first ever Solo but not alone trip, Ted. Solo but not alone. But we're not going to be in the boat arguing with each other that everyone enjoys so much. I just, uh, I want to bail from this trip to be honest with you. This boat that I have, I just, I just don't feel very confident in it. It's just huge. It's this massive tandem boat. Apparently the river is very high water. And, and uh, you know, I just, uh, I'm starting to feel kind of vulnerable out there, so. You sound like a gigantic baby. Jim says I sound like a gigantic baby, but <laughs> I don't know, it's hard, it's hard when you just kind of know that probably it's just gonna be like a yard sale of carnage. Ted and I are just cruising here along Wawash Cache. Saw so this place with a tree right through their roof, man. That sucks. I wonder if they even know about it. Running a little bit behind schedule and it's already four o'clock. We are approaching a dam. Every other time I've paddled, but we were in this spot probably by noon at the latest. We're, we're very behind. We can tell the water is already way higher than the last time we were here. So I'm, I still might be able to run this, I don't know. I'm gonna go scout it out. Sometimes with uh, big drops and ledges, it actually kind of flattens them out and makes them longer, but overall not as challenging. Portage, that's pretty disappointing because uh, Ted and I have run this, the two of us. I've soloed it, so yeah, a little disappointing. Less shit's gonna be runnable, yeah, you know? Everything's gonna take longer. Like, it would be excellent if you were rafting. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but... than me. 
second rapid of the day, uh, but there's a really extreme glare from the sun hitting it right now. It's actually making it really hard to see uh, any rock. Rapid doesn't need to be huge to pin, right? So you have several rapids and what's likely a portage and all kinds of stuff in front of us. So we're gonna try and see how far we can get. Right after this is Canal the Canyon. And unfortunately, although I've run it every time I've seen it, the water's just too high this year. That was awesome! Now we're at Canal Rapid. Is that the takeout? Let's go have a look at it. How Hi. fun was that run, eh? It's scouting a rapid and we're about 100 feet up. So one of the things that, <laughs> that happens is, is that everything looks way smaller from 100 feet up. So we're going to have to portage, which is a bummer because it's just about my favorite run ever. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be hard pressed to make it to where we need to make it today, but we're going to try. Buck! Buck! Almost there. Now I remember why me and Ted try to run everything <laughs> or line it. Oh, it's miserable. Just Portage Canal Rapid, and we're gonna run the rapid at its pace, which is pretty big, pretty interesting. So, and then we have another rapid too, and it's almost starting to get dark. So we're pushing it a little late, but uh, stays really light late into the day at this time of year, which is one of the great things about living this far north. Um, and the further north you go, the later it stays light. Anyways, yeah, so uh, pretty gnarly big water class three coming up. Hopefully we don't dump. Okay, here we go, baby. Fuck, other side. In the boat, Buck. Good boy. Next rapids just down river. Okay, Buck, come on. Come on, Buck. Here we go, baby. Dude, how fun was that one? The high water is making the rapids that are normally shitty pretty good. Yup! Buck! Oh, good boy! Come on, Buck! Good boy! Yes, 
campsite's better, no? Yeah, it's better. So getting to camp uh, really late. We're not there yet. We got maybe another kilometer to paddle. There's a site here, but you know, it's just so beautiful on the lake. We're gonna just keep paddling and take the better site and probably not get to bed early and probably not get an early start tomorrow and uh, be rushing by tomorrow evening. So basically the usual, but uh, so beautiful here. Uh, yeah, if we didn't get to camp late, then we wouldn't be paddling in this beautiful sunset. That sun is gonna crack the, the trees in two seconds and be dark, but isn't the next site just there? Rolling into camp at 9.30, eh? You want to light this, Jim? Yeah, I got some kindling here. thousand and eighty calories in this meal so pretty good it says it's two servings but honestly it's not what's your dinner Ted let uh, me see hold it up it is free dried and it's Thai style peanut curry and rice with beef and vegetables mm. One and three quarter cups. Seal and let sit for 15 to 20 minutes. It's a long time. Anyway, so that's all you gotta do. I just want you to Easiest meal of all time. that 100% uh, deep. I got some creamer here too. Sugar? No. I just don't really use sugar anymore in my coffee. Back this way, back this way, then back and forth through the middle, then around like this. Nailed it. One of these processes which is stuffing in the hot air. It's gonna be very round, but it's Oh, there she goes. See if I can land this without a net. Probably a three pound smallmouth, if not more. Beauty fish. There we go. Yeah. Maybe almost three pounds. Nice fish. Unfortunately, the bass isn't in season because it would be nice to have a, a uh, meal, fish meal tonight to go with our, I think we have pasta, um, but maybe uh, we'll, we'll get into some walleye or pike. We will see.
Beautiful day today. Getting on the water a couple hours later than we wanted to. So we're kind of uh, looking at the maps this morning, deciding uh, should we try to make it this far? Should we not? How much do we want to leave for tomorrow? And we decided that we're just going to get in the boats and start paddling and see how long things take us. We have a lot of flat water and then we have rapids that should be runnable but we also know that with the current water levels a lot of what is runnable isn't and that's definitely something that's going to slow you down but uh, yeah looking really forward to see what the day ahead holds but first things first we got um, solid lake section to go through here. Got a bite. Yep. Oh, f***ing lost it. F***ing had one, man. This one felt like a walleye. Got our lines in the water, trolling, trying to get into some pickerel. We got some diving lures on, but no such luck. By this time, on my last trip down the river, I'd caught in a big pike and Ted had caught in a nice pickerel, so not quite as good. Wow, what a day. Approaching a rapid. If I remember, this is one where um, there's kind of a straight shot of some big water, more or less a straight line, but if you miss and go too far left, you whip into a bone crushing hole that uh, you may die on. So it's sort of like walking at the edge of a cliff. You're just walking, but your consequences are large. So we're gonna jump out, definitely scout this one out and fingers crossed that it's runnable. Nope, nope, nope. Go on. Probably about the same standard tariff. Maybe a little worse. Ooh, huge wave there. I think we need to go down. Looks runnable, it just looks kind of It's already looking uh, harder. Anyone who, uh, doesn't know what poison ivy looks like. This is what poison ivy looks like. I'm regretting saying that I think I've elected to portage it. It's, it's not really that bad, but it's just crazy irregular. And there's a really, really dangerous hole at the top. I think I'm gonna run it. Ted has opted to portage like a wise man. Just giving myself a little positive self-talk here. You can do it, Jim. You can do it. Terrified. So, yeah, basically, here we go. Time to freaking run this uh, crazy rapid and hopefully defy death. Why do I do this to myself? my dry suit off because it's sweltering and that literally could not have gone better the top kind of uh, rooster tail I hit pushed me right over top of a pillow pretty much and I just eddied out right and like didn't even take in any water
So pretty treacherous uh, portage there. Not only is there a cliff, but it's also riddled with poison ivy. Catching a fish. Yes! Loving it! Now, unfortunately, there's not a pike or a walleye. Good boy, Buck. How's that? See? So, yeah, you see my map? Look. Here. Right here. Anyway, I don't have anything for late in the day and um, we have a portage here we're thinking that we're probably gonna camp here it is the evening it's you know fairly early still maybe about six that means tomorrow will be a really full day um, today was to be honest with you a lot of flat water paddling uh, we did have one intense rapid that was terrifying that uh, I scouted and that uh, wound up more or less looking like a piece of cake that was mountain shoot and then uh, stovepipe rapids was a piece of cake. Anyways, we're gonna start carrying. It's a good portage trail here, beautiful sight, and a beautiful waterfall the portage trail goes around. So pretty nice place to camp. So I think we're gonna call this home for the night and hopefully we haven't bitten off more than we can chew tomorrow because tomorrow's gonna be a real handful. I think we have to go about 20K and we have about nine or 10 rapids and uh, three guaranteed portages. If I take a boat out, I might actually catch a fish though. The original Bug Shirt Company. How you like me now, Bugs? How you like me now? Where are the fish? We really want to eat a fish. Bass is out of season. So we need to catch uh, you know pike or walleye and um, we haven't caught any usually by this point in the trip I've caught at least two pike last time we did it we had a couple walleye so I'm just little disappointed uh, in that um, but this year the fishing's been a little weird in some places the water's just been in flood and I think that has affected things and uh, 
it's unseasonably cold still uh, and the water temperature is unseasonably cold as well Ted's got one! Let me see it! It's kind of a dink, but he got one. Little lolly, baby! I mean, it's pretty little, but one or two more like that, we got a meal. So I'm gonna put it on a stringer. Just casting right into this uh, calm part of the eddy here. Yeah! Wally! Well, it's pretty small, but Ted got a little one and that's gonna be some good eating, so heck yeah. Surprised it even hit that spoon, man. I'm gonna tuck you there for later. Hello, dinner. Is there just like a piece of plywood lying around? Good. There you go. Not the best little haul and a lot of work, but my God, is it worth it. Got my fish. Fish crisp. Take these out now. Right. So now the question is, everyone's like, what do I do with my oil after after I cook with it? Three things. Dump it in the water, but then it kind of like gets, you know, it just floats around there and when you're trying to do dishes, it gets on all your dishes. Um, the next thing you can do is save it. So let it cool down and save it. And that's a great thing to do because you can reuse oil because you're heating it so hot it's killing all the germs and you can actually strain it to get all the particles out. So if you're on a long trip, saving it and straining it, great idea. And number three, woo, burn it. Or a second charm. Especially if you want to uh, shorten your eyebrows. Fish were like exactly the same, right? Yeah, the size that's biting. Mmm. Nice crab. Nailed it. El Dante. I oh, prefer my God. pasta done Steve Dante. Rather than El Dante? Yeah. Here. More. What about Mike Dante? The fish. It's just such a good addition. Okay. get up and face the bugs. Yeah. 
good boy. Stretch. 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 Very buggy weather this morning. We didn't get up ultra early, but we were out of the tent by six. And uh, basically we have a very, very, very full day with like nine rapids to run. We didn't push on yesterday when we could have because beyond here, the river gets really interesting. And there's more or less a canyon with portages and runnings that you're committed to and uh, nowhere really good to camp. So we decided to camp out here and um, and basically uh, bite off that whole chunk to, uh, today, which is gonna be pretty exciting. So today is gonna be an intense whitewater day. It's fun, I'm excited to get into these rapids, but I'm not too excited to portage, um, you know, hauling through the bush. And uh, I'm also, you know, of course, a little terrified because running rapids is, uh, is scary. I mean, there's no way around it. Uh, but with any luck, we should be coming out into Bing Inlet this evening, um, which is part of Georgian Bay, and uh, I'm gonna meet Tori and Wes today who are gonna pick us up. speed you up at the portage is getting riddled with black fly bites and here we are at the next portage it's a runnable rapid but it's immediately followed by a waterfall and very hard to get out from so not safe to run at this water level first of $30 The bugs are really, really bad right now. And of course you're hauling a canoe and a bag and all that stuff so you can't swat them. It's, it's torture. It's a form of torture for sure. So I'm gonna take a break here. And uh, with the two throw bags, at, where's my throw bag? Yeah. I lost my throw bag. Okay, so I found my throw bag. What was I doing? Oh yeah, complaining. So yeah, the two wet throw bags, the canoe with the spray deck, the paddles in there, and then I have to carry my camera case over my shoulder while I'm carrying the canoe. It gets pretty heavy and this boat is not a light boat, it's a heavy duty white water boat. And I'm really hungry all of a sudden and I'm being absolutely swarmed by mosquitoes. My bug shirt and the bug spray is at the end of the trail so there's just nothing I can do except go beast mode, complain, and or curl up into a ball and die. And I may do all three but I think I'm gonna go up the beast mode first. Kind of a little mini clip. 
hoping I can kind of skirt the final descent. Oh shit. interesting what this is the sketchiest section of river but we need to get to the other side of the river to run a little section right above this huge drop which makes it dangerous uh, you know we gotta make sure we don't dump there and also you know that's not the side of the river the portage is on so um, getting back over if you had to isn't isn't an easy feat to take out safe so uh, pretty intense, but uh, hopefully we're through this soon. Uh, coming up here, we have one of the most intense runnable parts of the entire river. Yeah, we're just looking down river. Looks like what's usually a two there is a three, but there's a big eddy on the right to get over. So we're gonna try to pull over there, let Buck out there, scout down river, maybe run both drops or at least the final drop and pick buck up um, and if we can't run them it's going to be uh, a bushwhack portage because the portage trails on this side so either way it's going to be pretty interesting second hole is way too close to that huge wave. I don't think it is. This one is, this one's actually the most powerful right current. Yeah. And it's pushing this way. Push you, it might push you right and you dog this. I might dump in there. I don't think so. I think we're gonna do it dude. That one looks dumpy to me. That's like the hardest thing. So we got a massive rapid here that's frankly scaring the shit out of me. All kinds of unavoidable, huge standing waves, irregular standing waves, poles, uh, side currents, boils, you name it. Ted's a little stressed out. We literally took us an hour almost to walk down this log canyon to scout this thing, which is just crazy. But uh, I think I'm gonna run it. It's a long stretch with the sketchiest feature right at the top. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be wild. I mean, the whole rapid has gotta be 150 meters long, if not more. Definitely a class three plus. Hopefully you see me coming down here cheering or coming down here with my boat out upside down, but still alive. same thing all right bro wish me luck oh uh, wish me luck ted jim i don't know man <laughs> you want to do it still don't you yeah i do but 
scared, man. I'm terrified too. Here we go, baby. Crazy ass rapid coming up. Boy, boy, come on. So smart. So smart. Go on. Go on. Buck. Buck, front of the boat. Front of the boat. What a good boy, dude. Yeah. Just yeah, meets like, us on the other side of the here, canyon. Super fun trip, even though times of it were really hard and terrifying and just awesome adventure. What about you, Buck? Did you have a good trip? Good boy. Oh, Tori's here. Perfect timing. Look at that. Hey, Tori. Hey. Hey Wes. Hey buddy. Hey. I don't have bagels and coffee, but I have a sandwich and a yeah. red bull. 